Welcome to the Big Baraza Day 2. My name is Amani Maranga and I'll be your host for today. I don't know if you were there with us yesterday, but if you were not, oh my, you missed such a wonderful day. But let me first start by acknowledging Mona, who is the head of Ops at the Sandbox and the founder of the Afriway to platform, an SME, who's just give us that, given us that wonderful spoken word about Africa and what we're doing here in Africa. Isn't it a wonderful day in Zamunda or Wakanda or wherever you are? Well, the Big Baraza is here, and this is the second day of the Big Baraza. And let me start by telling you what the Big Baraza is. You see, in this part of the world in East Africa, but this is something that is usually uh, an occurrence in most parts of Africa, people meet or convene in a social setting to discuss issues of social importance in our village or in our community, sometimes issues of governance and sometimes issues of resources. Now, that in our part of the world, in East Africa, in Kenya, is called a baraza. Now, a baraza could be a small baraza or it could be a big baraza. This is a big baraza. But this is a big baraza to discuss the space of SMEs, small and medium enterprises, the first of its kind ever in this part of the world, in Africa. If this is happening to yesterday, it was happening yesterday and today, and really it's to bring us together to have authentic, genuine conversations about what's happening in the SME space and where we need to be going in, as SMEs in Africa. Why is this important? Because we are the drivers of the African economy. We are the drivers of our local economies. Yesterday, we got a statistic that said 81% of all <clears throat> jobs in this country are created by SMEs. We really are the drivers of the economy. So we need to come together. We need to talk about what, what the things that affect us and discuss how to move forward. So what happened yesterday? Let me tell you what happened yesterday. Yesterday, we had an opening address uh, we had an introduction from the CEO of Sandbox, Joram. He'll be coming back today and he'll be talking about the Sandbox a little bit in a, in a short while. But we had an opening address by the CAS of the Ministry of ICT Innovation and Youth in Kenya. And she mentioned to us some of the things that the government is doing to increase the space for SMEs and for innovation. We had wonderful conversations, notably one with Dr. Gathuru, who gave an authentic story about his SME journey and told us how to thrive and to be resilient in times of crisis, how to lead in times of crisis. We had panel conversations where we talked to regulators and big tech, but we also talked to small businesses, SMEs like us, uh, and, and we, we discussed issues about where we should be, how we should be talking and shouting about ourselves. We discussed issues of regulation, tax, and communication. If you were not there, boy, oh boy, you missed something big. But we'll try and make this information available. So what can you expect today? Today it's about scaling. It's about growing. It's about having influence beyond your village, beyond your town, beyond your county, your country, having influence in Africa. That's what we're on about. How do you build your business across borders? How do you start to do business with the free trade areas that have been created in Africa? How do you move from being significant just where you are to being significant across, across the continent? You know, the Pan-African dream was a dream of our fathers and our forefathers. But I think it's a dream that we, this generation, will actualize. And so you better get strapped in. You're in for a good ride today. I'd like to start by introducing my good friend, the CEO of the Sandbox. His name is Joram Munamo. Now, if you haven't met Joram, then you need to change your circle of friends because this management consultant, coach, and public speaker is passionate about Africa and seeing its people achieve, how people achieve the greatness that is inherent in them while enabling them to have global influence in business, education, and life in general. This wonderful gentleman has skills in organizational structure, strategy, development, coaching, workshop facilitation, leadership training, and entrepreneurship. He 
is the founder and brainchild behind the Sandbox, an incub a, a space that is a one-stop shop, an innovative space that's a one-stop shop supporting SMEs and the only one of its kind globally, which is about to start expanding into the Africa space. He co-founded and grew and eventually exited Wild International and remains a board member of it, leaving it in the hands of a capable successor who was part of our panel yesterday, Chris Odongo. I could say many things about this man, but this is what you need to remember. He is the SME master. And every time you're with him, you're in an SME masterclass. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Give a virtual round of applause to Mr. Jora Minam. Jora, would you join me on stage? Good morning, Amani. Good morning, Joram. How are you doing? Everyone, um, good. Uh, believe it or not, I was in the wrong room. <laughs> no, I believe you. I in fact, <laughs> in fact, thank you for saying that because uh, I, I, I expect <laughs> that the, the 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 this wonderful innovation that you brought to us called the floors, uh, the floors platform, is not easy to use. And so, well, it's easy, but it can be confusing. It's not Zoom. So uh, I, understand, I understand how you can get into the wrong room. And after your, after, after your address, I will be also giving people a bit of a lay of the land of uh, this, this uh, platform. But you know what, Joram, we're very happy that you're here. Uh, we're very proud of what you're doing. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say about uh, Sandbox going into Africa. So please take it away. Okay. Thank you so much, Amani. And uh, welcome to everyone for day two. We are excited to have all of you on board today uh, for yet a very exciting day. And just to set the tone about what the day is going to be like, I would like to talk about several things. I would like to talk about the sandbox, but more so I would like to talk about Africa. And we call ourselves an, eco an innovative economic impact platform for Africa. And why do we say that? Because we have a passion to strengthen African economies through enterprise you know, development and job creation. We are quite passionate about ensuring that homegrown companies uh, you know, are able to get the structures that they need, you know, get the branding that they need, get the value addition that they need, the systems, the processes, so that as they grow, they can create jobs for, you know, our African youth in particular. And so as Sandbox, we do have a very big vision. We are looking to reach and, and grow 600,000 entrepreneurs through 300 Sandboxes across Africa in the next 20 years, who will sustainably create up to 3 million much needed quality jobs, especially for our youth. And so this is something we are unapologetic about. It is something we are excited about. Uh, because we know that this is a possibility. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, as you'll be seeing in my presentation a little bit later. Uh, but we hope that as we share this vision, that you can also come on board as our fellow Africans, fellow Kenyans, uh, for us to be able to achieve this. Um, Africa has a lot of challenges. We've come from being known as a dark continent, the poster child for, uh, you know, war, disease, uh, and poverty, but things are changing. And we as Sandbox have taken the time to look at what problems can we address as a platform, um, and three things come to mind. Number one is just the question of un unemployment in Africa. Uh, from the AFDB report, there is a number of 140 million youth who are currently unemployed and this is only a figure that's likely to keep getting worse if we don't tackle it head on. Um, Africa has an average age of just about 19, the entire continent put together. If you're above the age of 40, you're amongst probably the top 10% oldest people on the continent. And so we have a very young population and that young population is better educated today and will need the jobs uh, that we will create as SMEs. The other thing that we are addressing is also the entrepreneurship success rates. We've seen that a lot of businesses die within their first year and, and, and a certain number also die within the first five, simply because of how overwhelming it is to build a business within the continent. 
Sometimes it's due to the harsh environment. Sometimes it's due to stringent compliance. But at the end of the day, we are looking at how can we ensure that entrepreneurs uh, succeed more, are able to structure their businesses better, grow and create wealth for themselves. And then the other thing is that intra-Africa trade compared to the other continents is quite a low figure. It's just at 17%. Compared to Europe, that's at 69%. Compared to Asia, that's at 59%. And North America, at 31%. And why is this? Why is it so difficult to do business with countries that are right next to us? Why is it so difficult to do business with countries that are simple, you know, drive away? It's because we have challenges with infrastructure. But even bigger, we have challenges with getting to trust and know one another and do trade with one another across the different borders. And so I would like to bring to you, um, you know, a few opportunities uh, that are there within the African continent. And this um, I have picked from a document called the Trillion Dollar Investment Framework for Africa, uh, which is in support of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Implementation. This was done uh, by the Afro Champions Initiative and the Afro African Union uh, Secretariat collectively. And it presents some mind boggling numbers. And I just want you to take that journey with me down these numbers. Number one, when it comes to feeding the people of Africa, can you believe that the annual food import bill across the continent will be $110 billion by 2025? Why is it that the continent that has the, the largest amount of arable land is importing that amount of food from continents that have snow covered, you know, with rocks and all sorts, and some are even deserts? How is it that as a continent we are unable to feed ourselves and yet all 40% of the remaining arable land is actually in Africa? By 2030, the agribusiness sector in Africa is estimated to, to reach $1 trillion annually as an opportunity. I know these numbers may seem mind-boggling and you're asking yourself, where is this opportunity? As we go along, I will keep repeating. If you see the Chinese, the Europeans, the Americans running here, it is because they see these numbers and they know what these numbers mean. But we as Africans don't seem to understand exactly what this means as opportunities. But let's look beyond food and see what other opportunities are there. Moving people and goods across Africa, estimated to be a $200 billion opportunity worth of trade carried by the region's trunk road network. Some places don't have roads, and that's why we have a challenge in terms of moving goods, you know, from country to country. But that's what is estimated as an opportunity. Our aviation sector contributes 72.5 billion to the African economy. And, you know, that's an 80 billion uh, opportunity um, that, that is just staring us in the face. Uh, other numbers by 2030, the combined consumer and business spending is estimated to reach $4 trillion, not billion, but trillion dollars across the African continent. Also, projected consumer spending is estimated by 2030 to reach $2.5 trillion. If we look at how our cities are going to grow, by 2030, and don't forget, this is just nine years away, it is estimated that we will have 17 cities across the, the, the continent that will have more than 5 million residents. And we are going to have at least 52 cities that will have at least 1 million people. Uh, by, by 2030, the number of Africans living in cities is projected to grow to 50%. And this is, you know, probably a timeline that few of us will see. But Lagos is projected to become the largest city in the world with an estimated population of 88.3 million people by the year 2100. Okay? Not just in Africa, but we are talking about the world. Today, there are about, I think, 25 or 28 million. But what do these numbers mean when it comes to opportunities for us? 
when it comes to merchandise trade, Africa's total merchandise trade uh, stood at $997 million, uh, billion dollars as at 2018. Um, our import value is at $48 billion. Uh, uh, um, when you look at pharmaceuticals from outside of Africa, we import a whole $14 billion worth of pharmaceuticals. And sub saharas apparel and footwear market is valued at $31 billion. Who looks at these numbers and salivates? Unfortunately, not the Africans. Unfortunately, again, it's the Chinese, it's the Europeans, it's the Americans who look at these numbers and see a very lucrative opportunity for the future. And they're trying to do everything possible to come and tap into these opportunities. So where are the African SMEs and entrepreneurs when it comes to these particular opportunities? Many do not even know that these opportunities exist. Many of us have not even come across this particular report, which I'll be sharing in the handout section immediately after this. But we have to become the kind of people who dream big, see these numbers, and prepare ourselves to take up these opportunities. Because if we don't do it, somebody else will. And what our plan as Sandbox, um, we are planning to tap into that opportunity for sure. We have been running Sandbox, the village formula, for the last uh, one year. But this year, we shall be adding something else uh, into the mix, which is Sandbox Capital, which has been the missing ingredient in this whole village formula to turbocharge what it is uh, that we are looking at uh, tapping into as far as those opportunities are concerned. The opportunity that I just showed you will require financing, but they'll also require scalable businesses that will be able to tap into those opportunities and serve them uh, across the continent. So we've put in place a very robust board. We have a separate board for the Sandbox Capital as well, but we will also be looking to launch virtual sandboxes across the continent. And this year, next year, first within Kenya, we are looking at setting up virtual sandboxes in Mombasa, Nakuru, Eldoret, and Kisumu by the end of this year. We've already identified individuals who will help us to set up in those locations and began the process of identifying professionals like ourselves here at the Nairobi Sandbox who can make this a reality. We will then, after setting up the virtual sandboxes, be looking to set up the physical sandboxes uh, thereafter. And when it comes to East Africa, we are also looking to set up virtual sandboxes in Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, and Rwanda, in the capital cities. Again, we have identified the individuals who will make this a reality, and we are quite excited and looking forward uh, to establishing these virtual sandboxes and thereafter set up the physical ones that will enable us to replicate the same thing uh, in those countries. We're not just looking at these virtual sandboxes as tools of serving the people in those countries, but also as connecting bridges in between the capitals, in between the different countries, to deal with the issue of trust. As we are looking to tap into these Pan-African opportunities, we are building a platform that will enable you to get the data, to get the professionals who can help you tap into those local opportunities, and basically to create bridges across these countries that will enable this Pan-African trade to flow and grow in greater numbers than the 17% that we saw earlier. We will definitely be looking at going beyond this to cover the entire continent, as I said in our vision, but we are quite excited to do this because it means that by the time we have the big baraza next year, we're not just going to be looking at a Kenyan affair, but we are really going to be looking at an East African affair. And we invite you to join us in this journey. We are quite excited to put this in place and we are hoping that the people who attend this Baraza will also be equally ambitious and excited about these Pan-African opportunities. And throughout the day, we'll be talking to entrepreneurs who are actually tapping into Pan-African opportunities. We'll be talking to people who understand the African free continental trade area better. And you can be able to start making your plans and seeing how you can grow and tap into this. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. We look forward to having a wonderful uh, Baraza today. Wow. Joram, 
what an inspiring session you've given us. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's always amazing to see uh, vision, you know, and to see, uh, and I've seen, I've seen with you vision come alive. So not just dreams, but an actual vision come alive. And uh, what an experience. Thank you so much for that, Joram. And thank you for those numbers that we should be salivating at as well. Um, I definitely look forward to increasing my level of local saliva, uh, if you know what I mean. Now